The FDA authorized use of the first antiviral pills to treat COVID-19 at home. Paxlovid by Pfizer is approved for use in high-risk patients, 12 years and older. Clinical trials by Pfizer found that Paxlovid reduces the risk of hospitalization or death by 89% and will likely work against the Omicron variant. Antiviral pills could help to reduce the number of hospitalizations. If you do end up with an infection, this is your backup plan to shorten the duration of infection and prevent you from ending up in the hospital. They're easy to make, they can be shipped all over the world, they don't need to be administered by a doctor in a hospital setting. And so I think it's really critical because, you know, it's almost like a one-two punch. The day after Paxlovid was approved, the FDA approved use of another antiviral pill, Molnupiravir by Merck and Ridgeback, for high-risk patients 18 and older, when other approved treatments are not accessible or appropriate. So how do they work? What do we know about their effectiveness? And what does this mean for the course of the pandemic? So the holy grail of what we want for an outpatient therapeutic is to give a pill, say five days, twice a day, which is what these both pills are, and that they are directed specifically against enzymes in the virus and inhibit viral replication. That's what's coming. The emergence of variants of concern, like Omicron, underscores that the more the virus spreads, the more it can continue to mutate, potentially beyond what the vaccines can recognize. The manufacturers of the new antivirals say the treatments will likely protect against the variants of concern because of how they work. Variants often emerge with changes on what's known as the spike protein, the part of the virus that opens our cells up to infection. But the pills are designed to stop the new virus from being made, no matter what the spike protein looks like. They will still work against variants because these work to stop the virus from being replicated. The first fully approved antiviral treatment for COVID-19 was remdesivir, which is administered in healthcare settings through injection. It works by interrupting viral replication, much like the new pills. A recent study found that remdesivir reduced hospitalization in high-risk patients by 87% when given early. But other studies, including one from the World Health Organization, found the drug was less effective in improving outcomes. It's okay effective, but it's not profoundly effective in the hospital, because by the time you've gotten that sick, unfortunately your virus has actually come down, but your inflammation in your lungs is what's hurting you the most. The two COVID antiviral pills, Paxlovid and Molnupiravir, can be taken at home, twice daily, over the course of five days. Both pills stop the virus from replicating, but in different ways. Viruses work by invading cells and taking over their machinery, tricking them into constructing many copies of the virus. COVID is an RNA virus, SARS-CoV-2. It comes into the cell and then its RNA needs to be made into new RNA uh, strands. And then each of those RNA strands are put into a new viral particle. RNA is made of building blocks called bases, known by their initials, A, U, G, and C. Malnupiravir looks a bit like a C or U. So when the cell tries to build more virus RNA, it mistakenly uses Malnupiravir instead of the regular ingredients. So you get a mismatch of, of what it, the normal base pairing would be. The base pairing is important because that's the actual genetic information that is going on to form the next virus particle. So what happens is each round of this process adds more and more and more wrong bases. And so you get this mispairing and it's, it leads to what's known as error catastrophe. Eventually, there are so many errors in the viral code that newly minted viral particles aren't functional. It's got so many errors along that strand that it's like, wait a second, no, 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 no. Well, you're not making new viral particles. You are stopping the, the process of that viral replication. Paxlovid, Pfizer's antiviral pill, stops the creation of new viral particles after the cell has already used the virus's RNA to build a protein. RNA is translated into a big, long protein that's useless. We don't need a big, long protein, but we need that big protein to be cut up into smaller proteins to be packaged with the RNA into a new, nice viral particle. The cutting up is usually done by an enzyme called a protease to help build new viral particles. But this is where Paxlovid comes in. 
Paxlovid is a protease inhibitor that blocks that protease and blocks that cutting up of that big polyprotein into smaller proteins and inhibits file replication. Paxlovid is actually a combination of two things that work together, the protease inhibitor and a drug called ritonavir that's used in HIV treatment. In the same way this Paxlovid product, it actually needs to get to higher levels or it doesn't work. And what ritonavir is doing in this case is boosting up its levels and making it high enough levels to work in the human body. Paxlovid can affect how some medications are metabolized by the body. But molnupiravir raises different concerns. Because it causes mutations in the virus's RNA through that faulty base pairing, there is some concern that it could also interact with human genetic material. The concern has been for this class of compounds for many years, that it would also hit our nucleic acids, our DNA, our RNA, and that that would cause toxicity and potentially genetic problems. Merck is saying that they have not seen that so far, but again, I don't think we've really seen a lot of the clinical data uh, published in peer-reviewed journals yet, so it's really hard to say what's, what's really happening. Clinical trials by the manufacturers have found that both treatments reduce hospitalization or death. Molnupiravir by 30% and Paxlovid by 89%. Molnupiravir was not developed specifically for uh, SARS-CoV-2. It was actually developed before to inhibit other RNA viruses. It was being considered for Ebola, for example, and it doesn't actually work as well, at least in the clinical trial. And Paxlovid specifically was designed from scratch just for COVID, designed, targeted, focused against the protease of COVID. Experts say these pills have potential but emphasize that they would need to be taken soon after a person is infected. And if you think about, you know, if you call your primary care doctor's office and you ask for an appointment, very often you're not able to get an appointment um, within a day or two or three. And so if you're not able to get tested, to get that prescription, to get your hands on that pill, really within a day or two, uh, the impact of these medications is gonna be much less than we would have hoped. I do think, however, that ultimately it's not going to just be one pill. I mean, we we need combination drugs, drug cocktails. And this is how we, you know, we have conquered HIV to the point where people live their whole lives with undetectable levels of the virus, you know, because you're giving people combinations of two, three, and four drugs that work by different mechanisms and therefore more fully shut down the virus replication. That's really how you take down the virus and keep it from developing resistance. More than a year after COVID vaccines first became available outside of clinical trials, the emergence of antiviral pills could be a turning point for how COVID-19 is treated.